Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Koichi Watanabe. Thank you so much for the invitation for today. This is my first time to uh, join this event. And apologies in advance if any inconvenience being caused. Well, I thought it's one hour presentation, so I prepared a very thick PowerPoint slides. But now I only have 30 minutes, so uh, rather than quickly going through each slide, I would like to rather focus on the main points, spending more time and less time for those um, other parts. Contents-wise, I would like to focus on three themes. That's what I would like to stress first. What you see here, this is at Louvre Museums in France. And I just kept taking films of the spectacles or the audience looking at the Mona Lisa painting. And the first pillar of my discussion is about my profession. This could be related to my own PR, but at the entrance, there is this booklet covering my art pieces. At University of Fukushima, uh, there are certain activities that I do have, so I would like to go through that. And then the second pillar, along with today's theme, I would like to focus on between arts and science. My profession is on art, painting. Art. Um, the bijutsu and geijutsu in Japanese terms and art. These are three different terms. So I would like to focus on those three differences and how the science can play in, in that space. The third pillar is the activity after the Fukushima and the 311 disaster. Fukushima Biennale is one of the events that um, I am involved, so I would like to go through those as well, besides Koinobori art. At Fukushima University, I'm responsible for art classes. I belong to education department. That means elementary, and these are the classes um, to educate uh, the future teachers for the elementary school, junior high, and high schools. And I teach paintings. My research and class context, you can see what I do. Back in education, I focused on oil, oil painting. And when I entered into university, I covered these. I'm responsible for 30 classes, meaning I'm very busy, more busy than the elementary school teachers. And I do my own research. I focus on anything related to art. And also, we have the Regional Creation Institute, where um, it involves activities in Fukushima. So when I create my own oil paintings, as a model, Kurozuka film mentioned about the dancer, someone who use body to express themselves. I work and collaborate with those dancers. And also, I belong to anatomy class as well when I was back at university. Mr. Takeshi Yoro, medical anatomy is something that I've learned as well. And Da Vinci team is involved here. So the class I have, From a statistical point of view, I would like to have a very clear teaching discipline, three of them. So let's take a look at the English version. It's called IMT. As an artist, what would you like to express? Is it idea? Is it image? Is it identity? It's all about eyes, yourselves. But in the field of oil painting, you have to um, collaborate with painting materials. It could be um, water painting, it could be pencils, it could be carbon, um, it's just very varies. And furthermore, as technique, the artistic anatomy or perspective, these are something that I did not create, but it's something that has been transcended by the prior artists. So in that sense, if T is at the center, we are focusing much more on the technique of art. 
So IMT is what I call the three factors of art. When I ask teach in the university, I tell them, what do you want to express? Or um, is from uh, one perspective. Another perspective is about technique. And also, various techniques uh, from the past history. If you were to depict human body, uh, you need to care a be aware of certain muscle in the neck uh, in, from the anatomical perspective or perspective if you want to draw a landscape. So uh, transmitting these uh, techniques, traditional techniques, is also an important element. This is something that I created. I would like to be very brief in terms of intro introducing my work. Uh, one uh, book that I created is a textbook um, of 2D art. And this is the collection of my artworks. And recently, in relation to Mona Lisa, I have participated in the creation of a movie uh, called All Around the Praiser Q of Mona Lisa. And these are the works that I have been creating since I was in the university. This is the 12 animals um, of the tw uh, the uh, zodiac, uh, the oriental zodiac, mostly um, the domesticated animals created in these triangles. Why triangle? Because if you uh, put them together, it become a sphere. Uh, but I also utilize bone as elements, and my professor at that time told me that you're creating an oil painting. Why utilize bone? But even at the time, it was important for me to place as a theme the connection of human with nature. That's why animal was an important element. Series with forests, these massive works, these works have been used in theaters and stages. So sometimes it has been used in the opening ceremony of a conference. And since 2000, I went to the United States and UK. What I felt at that time was that I wanted to focus on nature and plants. Using plants as theme and uh, picking plants that were planted in gardens, people's gardens. And uh, I, we, I assembled these sampled plants and uh, placed them in churches. And this is human body, which is, in a way, my area of expertise. This is uh, called the uh, obese city. And the human body has been all uh, separated. Actually, my body uh, picture images has been all separated. And had I have dispersed these images into different museums in different parts of Japan, like Hokkaido and other parts. And in a way, I made sure that there is a circuitry movement between these pictures that were dispersed in Japan. There was no internet at the time, so I used telephone to ask people to place them in certain order. This is also another work uh, using different facial expressions. And here, I have started to create artworks uh, with meeting or encounter as a theme, encounter with people's different expressions. It's easy to take a picture from far away, but that's not the case. If you were to want to really take a mold out of people's face, you need to actually know that person. You need to share some time together. So that's the encounter. Now, these series are yet another series, and this is getting closer to well, uh, what tange -san was talking about. Um, well, uh, I, and I utilized this artist as a model. I wanted to use him as a model to create the um, his hand as the model. Uh, uh, his very wrinkly hard, large hands. And that really uh, made me want to create the whole mold of his entire body. 
and I had asked eventually to ask the dancer, Mr. Kazuo Ono, the model, to dance uh, surrounded by his own mold. And on his 100th year anniversary, I also participated in contributing some words to his, um, his book. Now, the video work that you saw earlier uh, has features a dancer, a Japanese contemporary dancer, uh, Miss Hirayama, a friend of mine. And she was featured in this video work. This work also features her as a dancer. And this is how I created this work. This is based in uh, the new, uh, in, in, the, in a major theater in Tokyo. And this is uh, the 3D image of the dancer, Miss Hirayama. So it was at the time 2006. So a full body 3D image of a dancer, a moving dancer was extremely difficult at that time, but I have succeeded nevertheless, and I have assemb assembled these images to create this. This is what it looks like. And based on that, uh, I was able to work together with this new uh, theater in Tokyo to create a work called The Rite of Spring in 2009. And this is also a piece of work that I have disp displayed here. In a way, this is a geographical surface of the Earth, but at the same time, it also looks like the, um, uh, the, the placenta uh, inside a mother's body. And this one is in the in the Fukushima Art Museum, and in the section of the archaeology, I utilize their rooms to present these artworks. To explain about this briefly, well, the Jomon earthwares uh, have some holes uh, on the bottom. Why was there holes? Because the, the, I had thought that these earthwares were created to put some water, it was a jug used as a jug, but that was not the case. It was used as um, a, 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 uh, it was used actually to place babies or fetus in the uh, in a way. So in a way, this jug was a bit like a, a womb and in that sense, we utilize this as a symbolic piece sent, um, around which the dancer was dancing. Uh, also, in Fukushima, uh, we have created another piece of work, uh, the water mirror. And th these are uh, works that are in relation to post-March 11th. A Dumaku or the Dragon way, um, Stream was an, another work that I created post March 11th. Uh, cherry tree that was washed away by tsunami was something that I collected. And also, this ha sheds light uh, from behind the artwork. So gradually, the light becomes stronger and stronger. And on the last day of this display, I was so surprised because the flower blossomed, the cherry flower blossomed. I had thought that the tree was completely dead. And so in that sense, I was... Uh, uh, I had put the plaster around the tree, thinking that the tree has died. but the flowers crack open the plaster that I placed and actually blossomed and really, truly made me think about the flexibility and the power of the, the nature. This is on a nurse, Fukushima, made uh, out of an artificial uh, material to create a geographical surface map of Fukushima. It was created by a local company in Fukushima and uh, you're utilizing a special paint, a pigment that collects light uh, and placing a layer of water on top of it. Uh, because the pigment co attracts and collects light, it heats up and heats up the water. And with that, 
um, the light changes in this way, look, making it look like truly like a geographical um, impression. And you see the airstream. In the past, we call it a dragon stream in the past, in a good way, in a positive way. We called it a dragon stream. But this time, it's regarded quite negative. It's about the f wind flow. And this is representing that change of the view. In the past, positive, now negative. And these are the art piece um, with a big theme. It's the Urushi, the Japanese uh, Sumar Lakar. And this is on top of that Urushi, we created the glass or the mirror. It must be so reflecting on the mirror. Urushi can use that keyword, reflecting, reflection. And actually, I had Pozunavi um, all over my hand because I used the lacquer. And some people get just uh, irritation just by nearby the Urushi tree. So this, in the past, you knew that if you go nearby the Pozunavi, you get itchy. So you took that um, quite positively. This is used to get rid of all the demons, bad vibes. 7,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago, Japanese tradition used Urushi, the lacquer. With regards to the reflection, just like a mirror, when you place the urushi very cleanly, then it acts just like a mirror. And for the first time, I know that um, urushi from Aizu Prefecture or Aizu region, that urushi was used to create candles. And that flame uh, was used to lighten up the Edo castle. So Fukushima was giving the light back then already. So light and the reflection was used in this urushi medium. So this has urushi and naturally it gets contracted. And when it gets contracted, you see a crack. And that's how you see the light coming out from those cracks. Um, you can see my exhibit over there in the room. And this is a bird view. It's as if uh, it's like a bloodstream of human beings. But then you at the same time can see this as an earth from a bird view. And the biggest keyword was this. In a way, the earth is like your body. You can overlap those two. And this is the art piece that I've been creating. And I just truly believe that. I admire certain anatomy experts. Shigeo Miki told the following. When you look at the sphere, the earth has a sphere, and then the um, tree grows out of the sphere, but also the blood and nerves come into your body. So flip side, it looks like an earth. So I do the anatomy work because I want to know more about the earth. That's what my um, aspired um, anatomy specialist was saying. So the surface of your body, reflection, and also the nature the bird view, looking at it from the earth. I have all these concepts around my artwork. And Kurozuka is the film that I recently made. And the title is Black and Red. Urushi context, black means north. Red means south. For example, when it's sunny, you can use the red silverware or red wear. So it just shows you the direction. Black means um, dark and red is bright in Japanese. So it means dark and bright expressed in black and red. And this is just showing you a natural dry out of the pigment and then we kept filming it and then put it in the video. So let me briefly talk about Kurozuka. Those of you who heard about Kurozuka, please raise your hand. Nobody? I'm very shocked. Kurozuka is, uh, there's the Adachi Gahara in the Nihonmatsu area in Fukushima. That's where the story came out. So let me briefly introduce you the story of Kurozuka. This is Kurozuka region. So in this area, there is this old hag sleeping and it's by the river. So 
Uh, some people say that this is where you take off the clothes before you really go see the judge of the um, afterlife. Iwate, the lady lived and lived in the residence of a court noble, nobility, with a daughter. And she had her own child in the nobility. And just um, this lady was playing with the daughter of a nobility. But um, if she, when she grew up, she couldn't talk at all. If you reach the f 500th river, there is a water that um, cures the loss of voice, some people said. But this girl couldn't talk even after drinking that 505th uh, water of the river. And now this lady got really, really old looking like this. And now she believes that this girl um, not being able to talk can be cured by letting her drink this baby's infant's blood. The dancer wearing the red cloth is showing this Koigoromo, the girl. And, um, and she got the heart out of the baby in the pregnant woman. And then you see this lucky charm worn by the pregnant woman. And that was a proof that it's she, the lady who got killed, is the actual daughter of this lady. And then this old lady went crazy and she ate some people. She stole some money from travelers. And then one day this high-ranked monk came and then he fought against this old lady. The point here is that I would like to show you a famous painting. This is Adachigahara region. This is the painting by Yoshitsuki Oka, Yoshitoshi, drawing a picture of a pregnant woman. This turned out to be your own daughter. So, Tokyo going outside, and then if you eat the child of your baby, it turned out that baby was your own daughter. This reminds me, or oh, this is very symbolic when you think of the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. Adachigahara, for example, the Japanese traditional no, the films, the magazines, or the comic books made by Tezuka Osamu or Nagamine Yasuko, the dancer. Again, portraying this old lady. She is originally from Fukushima. So there are lots of uh, the story being captured by different p artists. And Kurozuka? inside Fukushima, things that I thought has nothing to do with me but turned out to be your own daughter. That's one theme. And also the urushi that was used to provide the flame for the castle. I had that um, idea put together. And I would like to touch upon other ideas as well. But um, with regards to Kurozuka, this is what I think. What's lacking in Fukushima is the demon. It's not the demon who speaks up, but it's more about the symbolic nature of demon and create all these art pieces so that Kurozuka story can expand throughout the region. This is the art activity that I would like to pursue more and more. It's about a prayer for the lost souls. Due to time constraints, I cannot go into details, but um, the term art, where does this originate? In English term, it's about the architecture. It's about buildings. It's about the space. It's about the architecture and also magics. And also art means medicine. So-called the jutsu originated to be called art. Well, there's uh, legal studies and medical studies and also God studies being created first at the university. And then philosophy came out. And then the uh, nature science came about. The word science well, at the time of Darwin, people didn't want to be called scientists because science was humanity's general arts. 
And when you put IST, it sounded like an expert of a general studies, like pianist, violinist, etc. They refused to be called scientists, but later, the natural science uh, was valued with its culture of being objective vis-a-vis -vis the fact or the reality. Now, art, and there is another word, bijutsu, for art, um, uh, which was created at the time of 19th century in the Meiji period. But at that time, art in Japan included theater, dance, music, and plastic arts. Eventually, it has narrowed down to plastic arts. Kobu Bijutsugako, which was, was the very first um, art school that was created in Japan during the Meiji era, uh, which narrowed down the term Bijutsu or art in Japan uh, to the current sense. Art, in a way, was proportion of anatomy, uh, golden ratio to apply certain standards onto human body. Because I studied anatomy at that time, I felt that many people talk about, well, this proportion is beyond unlike Japanese. And I felt this is very self-derogatory for Japanese people. A good proportion is someone with long legs and small heads, small face. That's un-Japanese like. That is the particular standard that we apply when we talk about anatomy and art. But however, don't didn't we have yet another culture, completely different culture in Japan? Well, what, what am I talking about? Well, the our culture traditionally in Japan was how to deal and how to interact with nature. And that uh, is expressed in another word in Japanese called geijutsu, yet another word for art. I'm sorry, they, there is no distinguishing um, in Japanese, but they are written completely differently in Japanese or Chinese character. Uh, in Japanese, it's written uh, with a, as elements of the pictography uh, using the soil, tree, and a person planting the tree. So geijutsu, or art, in that sense in Japan, came with a sense of uh, a person planting the tree and making it grow, nurturing it. That is the word, actually, that has been used as a sense of art traditionally in Japan. And in that sense, art was introduced and imported at the time of Meiji in 19th century in Japan from abroad. But at the same time, we had another word, geijutsu, uh, which already existed in Japan um, inherently. These are two different things. And that is why I decided to place nature as the theme of our art exhibition. And last year, we held the Fukushima Biennale with rice as a theme. Working together also with children in rice fields, it's time for uh, my, uh, me to end my lecture. But finally, when it comes to the relationship between science and art, I can say that science is a child of arts. But within the science, well, if you detach art from science, then it becomes magic. Well, it actually loses the sense of magic or medicine in that sense. At the time of Leonardo da Vinci in Renaissance, he says, the uh, uh, talented artists learn from nature, but those who are not talented learn from other artists. So how can we learn more from nature is something that I will continue to pursue as my theme. Thank you very much for your attention.